Hello, greetings. Uh, now it's the midnight, over midnight here. And uh, I have been feeling, uh, I went to sleep, woke up, uh, because uh, it was, I guess, my sleeping time. And it was too much for me to take. So my sleeping patterns, times are messed up. And uh, I just woke up distraught again and uh, I have been made to feel a lady um, and the maybe the Bani Mustalik tribe with, uh, uh, how they were kept or what uh, so not sure but Uh, it's it's sure okay this is what happens to me when I see when the force is on me making me feel these things that I haven't seen and I, where I don't have evidence uh, they stop me and all this right so Okay, sorry if I say some things. I'm very distraught. Uh, distraught is not the word. But uh, feeling uh, what I was made to feel about uh, that's, uh, I can't say it's, it's right or wrong. They're stopping me. Uh, there's, uh, it's, uh, there's, uh, the truth is coming out, oh God. So I'm in a kind of confusion, agony, and this is, uh, yeah, so this is the one day, well, half day, sorry, half day, not even one whole day, I went to sleep, uh, half day feeling. Maybe it was the Bani Mustalik uh, tribe held hostages by the Apostle of Allah. Apostle of Islam, uh, Messenger of Islam, Apostle of Allah. See, I'm quite confused and all this. And you would ask why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because this is now fresh. It is um, a half day over. And uh, for because I felt it and it's fresh and just... Uh, you know, sharing my experience here uh, that I did feel one of the, like I was made to feel, I don't know how true it is, but I was made to feel the Bani Mustalik tribe being hostages and outside there are guards and how the Prophet, Apostle of Allah treats uh, his uh, captive wife Whereas what's written is, uh, through the Muslim historians, is completely different. We were told, and even what we were told and what's written, of course it goes, it tallies that he was helping the widows and it's okay to get married to the captive widows to help them since he is the true prophet of Allah and Islam, Messenger of Allah, Prophet of Islam. So that's why I have to share this. Uh, I'm in doubt and I sometimes uh, like, no, no, no. But it was so strong I couldn't say no, no, no. I was involved in this. Uh, anyhow, so one day, half day, a few hours it was enough for me so you would say that I'm schizophrenic and these things are happening to me uh, so yeah sometimes the schizophrenia comes from the environment uh, the cause of schizophrenia could be that uh, there are lots of people or someone trying to harm you who has betrayed you betrayed your trust in them and uh, so you know the crisis 
when you go through a crisis again and again and again, uh, one's mind uh, fuses out, and so, you know, the voices, you know, maybe, and there's black magic also. I was told rampant, and my case was this, that someone had done something on me. So this also, excuse me, although believing much in the glory of God and no one can harm me, if I am a good person, if I enter to remain uh, untouched and undisturbed by what happens to you, but what happens to others also. Uh, so when you've known your own helplessness, uh, you know, I, I, I speak for myself here. Thank God uh, coming to my element I, I want I will speak for myself I don't know about you uh, so if I say you and uh, I hope I don't defend or uh, offend you hmm. uh, so I'm distraught you see hope you understand that and uh, I've edited my video previous one I deleted because there was this uh, about I mentioned something and it's um, not right, it's politically not right to mention that. So for security purposes and all this, for myself and for others, I had to delete a part of it uh, in between. Let's see how the video comes up now. Uh, I'm uploading it and it's going to take time because that's uh, an edited one. It takes time. Uh, this is a video from the camera, so doesn't take time from this to mobile or tab to upload this video. Doesn't take much time. And uh, <clears throat> so I had to, um, what I'm feeling is uh, for this I half day or so less, uh, I, um, I had to reconsider. Uh, uh, I'm an extra, uh, but even more so now. Like I was asking, then how come the Quraysh didn't help the Bani Musta? Like as they had a covenant to help each other. And how come uh, since he, uh, Apostle of Allah, sent messages? about Islam to the Egypt, uh, to Egypt, to the Egyptian king, to the Persian Empire, perhaps to the Roman Empire and all this. No one could help and uh, I heard that Maria the Coptic, through historical, of course I'm talking, came from uh, the Egyptian king. Uh, she was given as a gift and Uh, so, my thing is changing. I don't know how to put this. I hope I can be a little fair with my words. Um, so remember, I have. A, I'm not making acting. Uh, I don't want to be emotional either. When a woman has been uh, taken by the opposite army, and uh, she's been she doesn't have a choice I think but although we are to, we may be told in the history books that she had a choice uh, and uh, they slept with her and kept her as her, their wife or handmaiden You may think it's right, uh, but uh, I don't think it's right. Um, she's raped. For me, it's rape. I don't know for other people, for the Shias or the Sunnis, what it is. But I'm speaking out of my own opinion about this. 
So you can say he's the right true messenger of Allah. Now uh, there was a Maria the cup there. Is a here Rihanna? Why is Rih Rihanna is mentioned here? Sorry, Wikipedia. Rihanna is also mentioned here. So I just want to read out uh, to you. Egyptian governor named as Al Mokokis. The Bari recounts the story of Maria's arrival from Egypt. Uh, so, yes, she was sent from Egypt to and given to Muhammad. And then the status as a wife or concubine when the Wikipedia it's given all when they discuss this and they put this here about. Uh, who is a wife and who is a concubine? Rehana bin Zed's name comes, and I also did a bit of reading on her. The Apostle of Allah's wife. So Mary, the most pious among you, Mary the believers, and these were not good women. They were from the army. They didn't have a choice even. Uh, so uh, I don't I don't know how I uh, we judge when we go into it in detail. You can see that uh, Javeria had a very good uh, character, and she, you know, and uh, we are told uh, Javeria. So, but still, uh, Salmon eighty whether some Shias believe in that salmon or not, or how they take it. Women have uh, no, no, like even if you see any good in women, do not follow them. But that's from the Shia side, and Najil Balagha is not taken as one of the authentic books. So then how to go about my uh, findings, uh, what I felt today was enough more than I would have gone crazy. I don't know how I have uh, a little bit, I kind of uh, stressed my whole body is tight, uh, bones are hurting slightly or, you know, like that. And, and they were, f um, I was, what I was, what I felt is about Joaria or the wives of the Prophet held hostages I was told the children their father their their men who were held you know who were taken captives held hostages I'm told <coughs> <coughs> so you may think this is a conspiracy against Islam and the Messenger. But, uh, if you read, do more research and put yourself in their position, in their position, Joveria's position, or uh, uh, sorry, Safiya bint Away's position. You would ask yourself then if you would uh, be there leaving your uh, yes he's killed your husband uh, in fact I think Hawaii's father uh, Safiya bint Hawaii's father was also killed and then you are this is the true prophet so you will become Umul Mu'mineen Uh, you will say this is about religion, not about money. Any time we would marry the true prophet because we live our lives and die for the truth. But, uh, okay, I ask those moderate Shias, uh, completely living your lives for the truth. Can we ever be Imam Hussain? Even Imam Hassan could not be Imam Hussain. As we say that uh, the sacrifice was unparalleled of Imam Hussain in Karbala. 
So, all these years striving to be striving and not succeeding, failing sometimes. So, would you even wear the whole hijab? Some of you, she asked. Uh, it took me some years to start wearing the hijab. I mean, in, the, in my 30s, I started. So, this and uh, it is um, quite, I mean, for some ladies, it is possible. They uh, wear full hijab. Some, even Shia ladies, they wear full hijab. So, but uh, not in the whole house, uh, sometimes uh, the daughter doesn't, the mother doesn't, the daughter does. So, all this is going on and I wondered, this is causing, you know, it causes a confusion or something in the society, something like uh, a, a stark difference, it brings about a confusion for the children and people seeing this. And uh, so, bad example, I think. Um, something serious that could, uh, you know what confusion does? Like we, rumors, uh, some, some uh, people also spread rumors in my life and I wanted to know who they are, how wicked could they be, because I had separated from Mr. Sa, and they were spreading rumors uh, at a very young age. In in my teens also, I discovered that uh, these people were spreading rumors and uh, gossip and all this going on. It was, uh, I wouldn't do this, so I was very, shocked in the center of advanced about such people and they were of course from um, they were muslims right so i wondered how these muslims can be like that when the quran i says it's very it's a uh, very unhealthy very shocking on one hand, like how we uh, how we feel, we sh you know, for uh, on oppressed. God tells Abraham, "My covenant does not reach the oppressed." So this whole Islam, my father or someone, like uh, someone told me that uh, I made a mistake um, taking names in my madness. I don't know how to put it indirectly. So, so someone told me that, uh, you know, religion is all about a soft heart, compassion, mercy. And yet they could not feel much for others. Could I understand my love for Mr. Sa? Religion is all about having feelings for the other, uh, soft feelings, understanding hearts, not taunting, not tantalizing, not hurting, not harming in any way. But how many of us are totally harmless creatures, human beings? Now, uh, Surah Baina calls um, these polytheists and disbelievers and uh, the Christians and Jews who have changed their book and are not going, or they're not, sorry, they're not going by the book. So if I make these mistakes, I don't know how the, uh, I still have to put my mind on this uh, to understand that the book was not uh, changed. So I failed to understand that verse, so I left it. Uh, the book in their hands was not changed when I listened to Sam Shaman when I was okay with him. And uh, so they were saying the book, Dr. David Wood and uh, Sam Shaman, book is not changed. This is the verse here 
is like this. Anyways, I haven't checked proper. I try to understand it, but I said, forget it. I could, I fail to understand that verse. So I've left it alone. So whatever, uh, the, I'll just be on the safe side and say that the Jews and the Christians did not follow their religion. This is the way it is written, I guess. In Surah Baina, you can correct me. If, should I? You can correct me by reading Surah Baina verses. Right now, I can't go there. I'll break. I'm on the verge of uh, breaking down. I'll scream and shout, and perhaps I will. Uh, now I can see what uh, you know. I'll have my. But this is not a scene from a movie. I'm not trying to make a scene here. Uh, this video, this audio is not about making scenes. So that before you come and kill me or do something, and say, what am I saying? You know that I've been feeling. And my questions, I think, are being answered. Uh, like how come the Quraysh could not uh, overcome the Muslims in Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah, who proclaimed to be the Messenger of Allah at that time. And I read a little bit of Dawat the Asharia. The only thing the Prophet, he, may, he, he, he makes a feast, he prepares a feast for his relatives, First, he invites his relative, his relatives, Quraysh relatives. And all he says is, all is given here is that I am the better from among you all. So all of them left Abu Lahab, he left, all of, all of the relatives, we are told, left because he, uh, I mean, uh, what is written is what I'm telling you, that he said, I'm the better from you all, among you all. I'm the best. I'm better than you all. Not best, but better than you all. That's what's written. You can do your research. Now, if I start saying uh, that this man was a rapist, one of a kind, please understand, I have gone through a lady whose name I I don't want to be reminded. I don't want to go through this again. Uh, and it was only for a few hours. Uh, how many wives he had and for how many days they remained alive, we are told. But this is very killing, like I felt. So I'm giving my part. I felt that I wanted to kill myself, but you know, if you have a child, if you are the, you've been the uh, chief's daughter, you want to save your uh, tribe. But you know, now if uh, really someone asked me after, like, yes, uh, please save us. But we are, f uh, at the same time, I was like, I was in despair. We're finished, uh, we're finished. So you know that time of despair comes. Someone, in Urdu they say, looting your izzat, raping you, dishonoring you, whom you would, uh, and under such circumstances, uh, uh, being a hostage and your father being there, and all this, you have to save. What choice did they have? So how I came to this, it was, it dawned on me that they were made hostages. You can read about Bani Mustale. And I just read between the lines. So I'm so distraught that I'm putting on my other glasses when I have already my strong glasses on, reading glasses. Uh, so the way I read, again, I'll be repeating it. Bani, uh, Bani, Banu Mustalik. So I showed you why I cannot take it from the Shia, Wikishia, 
because it's not in detail and it would anyways be filtered by the uh, holy progeny by the progeny of prophet muhammad <clears throat> so now what i have is uh, this general view from the sunni sources and detailed account of the bani quraiza whether the narrator's uh, chain of narration is weak or whatever it is whether it is only by one person i have to take it because you see comparing it with the quran it's also a uh, surah nisa verse 24 that uh, married women you are not are, forbi are forbidden to you married women are forbidden to you except those women whom your right hands possess and the way the Shias put it is Mutta, they go to Mutta and all that. Maybe somewhere else, uh, Akka Puya has put about slaves. How actually, we were told in Surah Noor, under multilingual Quran, Shia, Surah Noor, Ayah 33, that uh, now slavery is obsolete. Uh, so, no more slave girls and all this. And that the slaves that were of that time didn't want to leave, uh, didn't want to be free. You know, you like we see as Shias and Muslims that we surrender to Allah's will. And what is freedom for us? Freedom is that we surrender to Allah's will and that the intellect also surrenders to God's will. And that we become slaves of Allah. This is our freedom, true freedom. And why should we be scared of, you know, all the time, freedom, freedom. It has to be defined what is true freedom. Is there a free will also, right? That other point. Do we have a free will in this world? Or do we have choices? Not total free will. Total free will could come from in, inside of yourself so even inside you don't become a slave to this world and your desires that's what God has taught us so we become free in God or in his sorry in God's uh, principles the intellect will guide you oh god sorry intellect will guide you like alama uh, akapuya has said to this religion this is the highest form of intellect the it raises your intellect this religion like imam ali has uh, kind of put in words in uh, what do you call it? I think uh, in, in Kulaini al Kafi were also given like various Imams' narrations. I mean, you know, like Imam Ali being called Abul Hassan, and I get Aba Abdullah is even Imam Jafar Sadiq, we are told. Or mostly Aba Abdullah we call Imam Hassan. So, like that, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit uh, confused. Like, which Imam is it? In al Kafi al Kulaini, the narrations given, but it kind of tells us in the book of intellect through the narrations of our imams maybe i should put it this way and not say imam ali sorry if some mistake comes out of my mouth i'm sorry uh, so various imams have told us that the intellect came when god called it and it left and when god said go back it went back when it, God said, come forward, it came forward. So once your intellect is uh, satisfied with something, you obey. So we were told this religion is such. <coughs> Excuse me. That the intellect, even intellect is also such. That it obeys Allah. So your logic, when your reason, a reasonable, what would a reasonable man do? Even in common law, we are told, like this, we are told. I've studied common law in London. So, th 
this side, uh, I have for the first time felt uh, this side of against the against Islam and the Apostle of Allah. And even if uh, at that time, as a Shia, if I were to read about Jawaria, now we have all the knowledge, research is there, uh, you know, here on the fingertips. You can just, if you have a, if you have internet. So I started to object uh, to some matters when I started to read Najul Balagha. And I can't pinpoint where I was stopping and objecting. Oh, no, no, this is not right. And even Al Kafi Al Kulaini, I started to object to some of the narrations, but kept my mouth shut. Uh, and then those were hadiths. Even the Quran, I objected. I was told this has the wisdom of Allah. And who are we? To know what is in the wisdom of Allah. So, how um, I have gone into a reverie, actually thinking. So then, uh, who are we to question, even know the wisdom of Allah? Because we're also told in the Quran, that the soul's knowledge we have been given but let. So how can I, only God can speak to your souls. And so I feel this is just, uh, now um, we can't question the wisdom of, then it's we are told that this is a clear book. It will satisfy you in all your queries and questions. Ah, uh, so, but then at times we are told, so I guess I was here in the Bani Koreza, oops, I reached Bani Koreza, no, the Bani Mustalik. Uh, so I'll go back to this, right, the intellect. Surah Azha, very important surah. Multilingual Quran, sorry. Okay, maybe uh, I changed my mind, actually. <coughs> I've done a lot. I don't know how. So the Shias, you see, on the Shia side, if I could tell someone that, uh, someone like very close to me, my mother or my aunt, because my aunt, late aunt, was doing research on this, that I don't uh, agree to what he has done. And then I was told that some things when I was reading, like for example, Allama Majlisi, the Hadiths. <laughs> so, and yeah, I was told about the Surah Azab, verse 37, about uh, Zainab and Zed's wedding from the Hadiths that my aunt told me that uh, it was just a suggestion by Prophet Muhammad. It wasn't like a command to be obeyed. But uh, then recently I found out, no, no, it's a command. Zainab was commanded to obey Allah and the Messenger. Verse 36. So my aunt is no more that uh, I should correct her in person here. So please correct yourselves if she asks you think it was a suggestion only for the marriage proposal and to Zed by, uh, by Prophet Muhammad to Zainab bin Josh. Right? And so the marriage fails and we are told that he tried his best and all that. And then uh, so the last video I said some political things between Shia and, uh, uh, you know, Sunni. I did not mean to bring a 
conflict, you know, make it worse or something. So, but anyways, I've edited it. Other points are like uh, about uh, the wives of the Prophet. We are told that uh, uh, the wives are important, but not as important as the uh, Ali Fatima Hassan Hussain, the household. This is the household. So, and another thing was like, uh, I started to, before even someone questioned me, a Christian or someone really, I was thinking, so what made me uh, just sit on this, that uh, what he, even in this Surah uh, Azab verse 37, that he hid in his heart what Allah was to reveal and said, keep your wife and fear Allah. You know, if you are a counselor, like all these things, right? Uh, you are a married counselor, you are the physician, you must tell Z that, okay, this marriage is not going to work. But we say, no, no, he has to try. You try your best, leave the result out. And so God, excuse me, in his wisdom, will come up, uh, it has, it's a great wisdom. and. The, uh, the wisdom here, God says, is uh, that he's made it easy for you to marry your adopted son's wife. But you cannot make them Ummul Mumineen. Only Prophet Muhammad, by marrying them, can make them Ummul Mumineen. And then cultures differ and customs uh, only Islamic custom is the best for us. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, like when I was a Shia, I did this uh, project about uh, universal unity, you know, in laws, and so that every culture may understand. This is the universally accepted thing. This is the cultural relativity here. For example, if Khomeini, like I mentioned, and I feel very terrible about the satanic verses, then I realized that, oh my God, the printers and some are stabbed to death and oh, what is this? You know what, what it caused uh, the fatwa against satanic verses and Salman Rushdie by Khomeini. When I saw what it really, when I read in Wikipedia, it was accessible to me, then I was like, no, no, no. And you know, there I was in my project trying to explain that we should understand each culture. And what, when I was, yeah, there was some superficial, I was trying to reason with my religion when it came to uh, the women's rights. So I took that verse right from the Quran for my project. Uh, in this uh, relativity of uh, cultural relativity and universal uh, hum uh, rights, uh, you, you know, oh, it was, I've forgotten the topic, it was a very long one. Even uh, someone said, what a long, uh, I don't understand what this is. So, the universality of the laws and rights and all this. Uh, you can find it, you can find this in George Jordex on Imam Ali, Voice of Human Justice or something like that is typed the title of that book. <coughs> so here you have to understand that uh, the Islamic uh, world, Shia world, has uh, men as the maintainers of women. 
they're not forced to marry. You know, they become pregnant and they need to take a break and all this. So I reasoned to myself with this, that men should be the men. Why men? Why has God made in the Quran and told us that men are the maintainers of women? And then if they, and then the right of women is that they should then, because they're not working, they don't have that stress of work maintaining financially a woman so I, in the end when it was wife beating thing I started to I just cut myself short I hope you understand where, what I'm trying to say but if you I mean I'm a terrible explainer so uh, I try to reason with that you know, slightly beating your wife or slightly beating her, but beating her until beating her so that you, as a, you know, you know, the man knows. Since he's the maintainer, he must know how much to hit her because he's taken, he's uh, kept away from her. The, the conditions are there. First, like, last resort is to beat her. Last resort. When all avenues of peace have been closed, Imam, we are told for Imam Hussein to, then he rose up because this was his Nana's uh, religion, should have, Allah's religion, that given to his uh, maternal grandfather, uh, which was to be upheld and maintained by this progeny of his, so that it is justice is done. Complete full justice is done. And not an atom's worth of justice is, you know, lapsed or fails or collapses. So that's why Imam Hussein had to, who had taken this caliphate, Islamic caliphate, usurped it. He did not rise out of rebellion, we are told. And he himself in a speech gives uh, that speech that he gives in Karbala. Or wherever he gives that speech before reaching Karbala. We're repeating it there. That he has not risen out of rebellious rebellion. So to be fair and square, if a wife is so rebellious that she doesn't even, you fear that she will not keep a trust, she will not keep your trust and uh, do things, betray your trust behind your back. So I tried to reason with all this and look at it through all sides. Still I was uh, struggling with the last part of this verse, wherever it is, I can't remember, sorry, about men are the maintainers of what, uh, the, their wives and uh, women, you know, what the, uh, wives, wives. And in the end it says, uh, see how confused I am. Uh, and in the end it says, like you can beat them. Some people write in brackets lightly. But what would lightly, like you just, what would this do? You don't you think that uh, keeping away from them first, first uh, talking to them, and trying to first, uh, you know, count, uh, talking to them. If they don't understand, then keep away from them. And then what will the end? It's slightly beating do. I mean, you have to start to beat them. It's open to interpretation, I guess. Yeah, for every man, his wife, you know how to beat your wife. Because if you have spoken to them and they don't listen, then you leave the bed, you separate from them. And they're in the same house, though. 
and then you beat them. Only men can beat them. So what's the use of lightly they put there? Lightly beat them. What is what? What difference would it do? So it's open to interpretation. We can safely say that the man knows how to. Not slightly. I don't think it can be slightly if you discuss this point with me. I try to reserve, keep it reserved because I don't want to go into speculations and all this because I thought I don't understand something uh, which is not uh, here in the Quran ayats properly uh, explained and it's not properly explained. It's open to interpretation but it was not time for the Shias or the Muslims to hear this I guess. Now it is time for me to also to hear this, my explanation. Slightly beat them with the toothbrush and all this. And then say, you know, if now you don't, I will beat you. Slightly beat them. You see, coming to... Um, the wives of the Prophet through the Bani Mustalik, Banu Mustalik tribe. How actually, you can see in this now, please do your research, how actually could have, uh, could the Prophet, as I wondered, have, uh, if he's not the true Prophet, or even if he was the true Prophet, things would be different. But we don't see that. And I, don't have right now that uh, mind to explain but since if he's not a true prophet which it should no no I have to put this right why isn't he a true prophet what does a true prophet do where are we told in this Quran we are just told that if he was not a true prophet we would have uh, taken him by his right hand and cut off his very aorta, right? A true prophet, and we are told he's merciful too. He's a mercy. He's a mercy. So, mercy, what is a mercy? Meaning, you know, Rahman and Rahim. Rahim. So he is good with the believers because uh, he's a mercy. Uh, God gives respite to, so, excuse me, God is more than mercy. Right? This, that God is more than, God is uh, beneficent, merciful. So you have to see the difference because we are told that either Rahim or Rahman, now this also I'm forgetting, sorry, uh, that God gives respite to the, his enemies and he is given respite to Shaitan, Iblis, because he is all beneficent, merciful, whichever one you choose, which one actually you don't choose, but which one tells us? that with hypocrites, you you are given lies, disbelievers, you are given lies. That's a blessing, that's a mercy or of Allah. So he doesn't take action against you, he gives you respite to do wicked things, bad things to the people. And then through that, uh, it's very, uh, confusing so I had to leave all this aside because for years I've been in this web of confusion and I just took Chitu Krishna with this book and it started to you know all that weight of confusion I've seen hypocrisy and even Shias some Shias and all this right uh, it just you know fell off all that burden the only thing was that I had now gone insane and was hearing voices and things were being uh, thrown at me 
So I had to say my prayers, Nadia, Ali and all that. Anyhow, that was the only thing. Otherwise, all that burden of not being able to understand some parts of the Quran, verses, and not being fully able to grasp it, although I prayed sincerely to be a sincere Muslim, a Shia, and to also reach the heights of spirituality, gnosis, irfaniyat, as they call it, in Shia Islam, Bahafiyat, in the, uh, all this, right? So, you know how I pleaded to Imam, like I was told, Kulaini, Imam Mahdi used to come and give him the narrations of the Imams. So I pleaded with Imam Mahdi, because I had uh, seen him so many times, I had his dreams also, that please can you come and give me, explain and give me something about uh, even the stars and all this, that my dreams would be half like about the, uh, the star falling and not, uh, it uh, shoots but it, uh, it's, a, it's like uh, so, you know, not coming full to its potential and all this. So I wake up and I do research and I pray Nadia Ali and I pray that Surah Taha, from Surah Taha that verse, Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. And there are duas for us to, like Dua Yastashir, where I failed. Uh, and I needed it quickly because, you know, I, I needed to help myself and others and proclaim the bounties of thy Lord, we are told in Surah Taha. And my mother, people in Karachi, whoever I could uh, uh, help uh, reach out uh, nearby, near me. Yeah, so, in my way. Because, you know, there's a saying that uh, I would pass this way but once. So, any good I can do, let me do it now. So, God, even in uh, the Surah, I think Qassas or something, oh God, uh, please uh, send me a favor or, so that I may do a good deed. Uh, Hazrat Musa's prayer, I think it's in Surah Qassas. So like that I used to pray and failed. Uh, it wasn't coming to me. Uh, so now I'm here, uh, Bani Mustalik, not Bani Koreza. And I wonder how. Uh, here I wondered, like uh, also before, that when uh, Ghalib Kamal was giving about Bani Kureza, like how could it be that uh, Rasulullah uh, did all these bad things and the Quraysh were there in thousands. We are told Yazid was in uh, Yazid's army in thousands and they were only 72. So how could they do so much uh, zulm, cruelty, terrorism, all this, right? How could they finish a tribe in one day when the Quraysh are there? So, and I have to consider Bani Quraysa's history. So seeing the, seeing some lapses, in Shia historians and the way they explain things coming from the Ahl al -Bayt, and then seeing that the, from this Umayyad side history is coming uh, which is against Prophet Muhammad that he really did this to the hypocrites we are told they were attacking him and they were making life miserable for him life miserable uh, Shouldn't I say something? So they were making life, uh, they were bad. They were attacking him. But here in Banu Mustalik, okay, this also that they were the ones attacking him. So, but how could he do it when the Quraysh are there? And how could the Quraysh in Khandaq or Khaybar, was it, uh, in the multilingual Quran, like how could 1,000 of them just leave because Imam Ali murdered their Oh, uh, killed, killed, uh, 
their leader, Jews leader, and then the Quraysh just left, we are told. One thousand of the soldiers that had come to Medina to help in Khandak or Khaybar, battle of one of them, I'm, uh, I'm forgetting, sorry. Like, how could they just leave like that? You've just killed, okay. Oh, so maybe like now, Jaweria, I felt, it's like, we're finished. Uh, we're done with the, we've given into him. And is this the way? Okay, the other party is rebellious, but if we will catch them by the, we will seize them, we will wait in ambush for them. Is it worth it? The Yitosha, but because they attacked and they exiled, and so God is, yes, God supposed to teach these mischief makers, corrupted Zalimun, Zalimin, a lesson. And we will take their women. Now, would do you think at this time, these hypocrites, when even our believers, good women, you should not take them, you should not take their advice. So how can these Jaweria type be? Uh, say yes, yes, Apostle of Allah. Uh, so the a detailed version is given in uh, by Wikipedia through the Islamic sources. Umayyad side. The Quraysh, Bani al mustalik allied to the Quraysh of Makkah. They helped them in Ohad. They had a covenant in Wikishia, I find out, I think, through the notes or uh, the references section. Were the subject to an attack by Muslims. And you can correct me wherever I'm wrong. In the month of Shaban, the Muslim force met the Banu Mustalik in battle at a watering place called Al, al Muraisi and defeated them sound, soundly. Is he taking the... I'll lose my point. Here, uh, they have... They attacked. What else did they do? Uh, here, the Muslims attacked them. Were the subject to an attack by Muslims in the month of Shaban. The Muslim force met the Bani Mustalik in battle at a watering place called Al Muraisi and defeated them soundly, taking the Mustalik chief, Al Harith, and others captives. Among the captives taken by the Muslims were Al Harith's daughter Joeria. She initially fell among the booty of Muhammad's companion. She fell. She didn't have a choice. So until this good, well and good for the Shias even, even if, uh, let's say, the Muslims attacked, Rasulullah attacked first, they were the ones who jo had joined the Quraysh in the Uhud, Battle of Uhud, and whatever these hypocrites were doing, so it was right for, then say, please say that it is right, for, since, you know, they were, look, don't go there, they were preparing for an army, spy was sent, spy was sent, then see that spying is not allowed, under no circumstances, right? Common people are not allowed, but Rasulullah is allowed, the, the army is allowed, the government is allowed to spy. Is that it in the Islamic? Is that how you take this verse, that spying is not allowed? So I haven't been to come to study this religion deeply and look at the history also and the Quran eyes. But here I am doing this on my own. So you may raise your objections against me. But what are we here to discover? 
after seeing discrepancies and all this and like no, no. maybe you'll say no no but no no you can't you reason reason use reason a reasonable man would not say no no a reasonable man would use his reason and the Quran ayats uh, fall apart some of them uh, so uh, regard I mean what uh, the science we don't even know what we're not scientists but they're scientific uh, if you've uh, studied from perhaps in your seventh class what eighth class ninth class intermediate metric in Pakistan where are you taught science but if it goes against the Islamic uh, thing then don't even take that because we are told that uh, these shaitans have changed the face of the world. So Rasulullah Zallah has even covered that. You won't take proof outside. You will only take proof from Prophet Muhammad. You won't take proof from the scientists outside, but you would take proof from Prophet Muhammad and his progeny. She has uh, debate a reason no not debate please I'm not in a debate I'm in search for truth I'm not in any debate discussion please is this right what does the Quran say self-evident truths does the Quran say go reflect reflect about these verses this is surely the truth from your Lord. So will we not, these are the signs telling you, we have sent you signs on the horizons and in yourselves that you will be so sure, you will be sure about, evidence will be there, right? You will find out, not being scientists, you will give evidence to the scientists. You will correct the scientists by what, killing them? Or by saying, oh no, no, no. It says in the Quran, this verse has come that uh, the sun goes around uh, the moon or the sun goes around the earth. So, excuse me, you would say, um, no, no, wait, uh, you are wrong if you're saying. Or maybe take a very easy one not to get confused now. My mind is kind of hazy and confused. Uh, just take this a very easy one. It was coming to me now. It's fine. That uh, the uh, earth is uh, not round. It's oval. It's egg shaped. That's what the Quran ayat has said. So, and the scientists find out that the earth is round, not oval. Then what uh, you will, of course, uh, why would you take the Quran out? Do you know that the earth is oval? Do you have evidence? If the Quran I tells you, I give you this evidence, tell the scientists, through this calculation, not through their calculation, then I can understand. <laughs> oh, please, don't laugh. This is very serious matter. We have been taught to love Imam Hussain in such a way that, I mean, two thirds of Quraysh, what they did do, and all of them even smiled and were happy, lawn and lawn and uh, ziyarat -e Ashura. Mukhtar has said that if I kill two thirds of Quraysh, these hypocrites who did such atrocities that uh, it would not be enough. It would not be equal to one finger of Hussein, Al Hussein, Hussein ibn Ali. Right? So before you, before we go there, I've gone there, but come back here. So please give me the calculations. This is what I was also praying to God that, oh, I will tell the scientists, 
I will go to the idol worshippers. I will go to a Hind. And I will tell them, look, uh, reason, apply reason and give evidence. Because the Quran also says, right? Apply reason and evidence I have given you. This is. So please, where is that Imam? If we don't have evidence, then where is that last Imam who knows, who has the evidence? <coughs> so I prayed. My mind did not open. I was worse. I couldn't read. I couldn't put the lights on when it got dark. Where will you find evidence to give to them? This is the most appropriate way to do it, to find uh, when you, Quran, oh, our Imams have given us. So I read uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq's book, The Greatest Scientist Ever. So time, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq says, and then there I was reading, only Imam Jafar al-Sadiq has given this, no other. So, because we were told, you know, at Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, Muhammad Bakr, uh, the Umayyads were now, you know, the Abbasids and Umayyads. A uh, shift of power was happening. So, Imam Muhammad al Bakr and Imam Jafar Sadiq got this time, availed this time to now give their, give the knowledge to their Shias, as they knew, I mean, so much from Allah, and they were giving it. So, like that, right now, if, uh, let's suppose, if our Imam Mahdi was to, for this Qur'an, you know, what we are told, take the Qur'an with uh, my itrat. So if Imam Mahdi can come and tell the scientists that quantum physics, like Dr. Amit Goswami gives, although the scientists may not agree to it, but they're not killing Dr. Amit Goswami even. They may act cold with him and say, what are you talking about, and all those things. Uh, the normal physicists. So then we are told that Imam Ali has said, some people are not ready for the truth. Do not give them the truth when they're not ready for it. Then Prophet Muhammad should have also waited until the idol worshippers were ready for the truth, slowly, slowly, and the Jews were ready for the truth. But uh, the way these strong ayats have come, and then we say that the Makkan times, oh, he was soft and very nice with them. And really, which, uh, okay, he was very soft in Medina. So I'm looking here, I just, sorry, I opened Banu Mustalik, among the captives taken by the Muslim was al Harith's daughter, Joweria. So we are told that uh, don't you think Rasulullah should have uh, hello, she, I mean from the Shia side I'm looking at this, she initially fell among the booty of Muhammad, this is the same in other words, a share. From, she fell into the share of Tabit ibn Kaz as a booty with the hypocrites, with these enemies' daughters, chief's daughter. You're going to do this now that I found out, you know, I've changed. I thank God I left Shia Islam because I'm not going to cry there no matter what you tell me now. I mean, what you told me, I know, right? You told me there were no captives. Captives should not be taken in, in Islam. Women captives at least should not be taken. That's, that's the message I was getting. 
from Karbala, Imam Hussain and his women folk and children. Children, women, about the women I'm talking about, right? So let's stick to this first. Then we will go to the children. Even women captives were not allowed to be taken and married. You say here, Rasulullah, again, we're, uh, that he is a true prophet. But these women uh, don't want, did, look how, how was, can a Shia tell me through his noses? Abhi mein uth ke turbat se bolta hoon. Abhi mein sach batata hoon. From the turbat, a forehead on my turbat. In prostration. You know what this prostration is? Sajda. Right now, after this prostration, I'm going to get up. Yes, please get up and tell me about Bani Mustalik tribe. And Jaweria. Is this right? Allah Marashita Rabi has recited a majlis on sajda, prostration. You can listen to it. I've listened to it many a times. It's available on YouTube. Your complete surrender, taslima, it's complete surrender to God's will. What is the prostration? What is the ruku? And then what is the prostration? So you're telling me, as a Shia, that uh, there was a saying going on on the internet, Shia, that now I'm going to get up from this prostration on this turbat. You know what turbat is? It's from the sand where uh, the ashes are. It's like, no, from the sand of Karbala where Imam Hussein was butchered. Please get up and tell me the truth. That's what they, they claim. So I'm asking them, yes, please tell me the truth about your area. And what uh, Anita Rai claims that she had, uh, she had a couple of dreams where Prophet Muhammad has told her and light came and Prophet Muhammad has told her about uh, in detail form what happened in Karbala to Fatima Zahra and Abu Bakr and what happened in Karbala. You see, I can go, instead of talking like this, we just open the site of Anita Rai. So this is what Anita Rai has written and I can read it out going to Anita Rai's Site. In detail, she's been told, no, Shia has been told this, Anita Rai, on uh, essential women. Uh, so, the essential women, this way you can find her website because then there are Anita Rai, an Indian actress and all this and uh, not for sale author so you can uh, read her important note uh, where is it uh, the author has written the book after being overwhelmed by the lives of the two most remarkable women the world will ever know lady fatima and lady sana she publishes the essential woman sorry it's not women it's woman independently without recourse to any kind of financial assistance whatsoever. It is a hadiya to Lady Fatima and Lady Zaina that for as long as she lives, God willing, she will publish it herself and distribute it for free. I didn't get it, I applied for it. The essential woman does not belong to her. Lady Zainab has the sole ownership. And it is her grace and power that runs this title. Anita Rai is just an instrument of her holiness. And she intends to publish and distribute at least 72,000 copies of this book in her lifetime. After her death, her
Her progeny will continue to pay this homage. Uh, where are we told now that uh, author's notes? My dear ones, this is Anita Rice notes. I have been asked to introduce the essential woman with some information about how I came to write this book. The story really has its beginning in a serial of dreams. In a serial of dreams, as I'm writing this note, the days have begun to grow longer and warmer here in London. It means that now we have made, we have more light than in the cold, dark, foggy and indifferent months of an English winter. Well, where is she? I am a Shia, ex-Shia now. I'm giving my voice out, my personal things out, but she's still hiding. Anyways, and she's in London, but she's scared of what? I couldn't even find her on Facebook. No, it is not a coincidence. There is no such thing as coincidence. That's what uh, Yusuf Zaidi told me. Ittafaq nahi hai. Coincidence nahi hai. You know what uh, uh, that one writes. Hmm. I'm getting a bad breath of someone. <coughs> Anita Rai Saleh Muhammad Rai. He had a sister in uh, England, I don't know, anyways. So I want to know who Anita Rai is, really. I want to meet her and ask her. So this uh, Sunni was very angry at me that I was praising the principal of Alban College. He has a sister there on the outskirts of uh, London. He used to come to Holborn College uh, he's to do his LLM. He was doing his LLM from, you know, London, uh, sometimes going there, sometimes coming to Holborn College for some lectures, sometimes going to that other, uh, what's that? The, uh, now I've forgotten the uh, London economics. There they have some lectures on law, LLM. Now Rai, his last name was Azam Rai. I don't know. How could, what, in detail, uh, dreams, serial, serial of dreams. And I'm here having today feeling. Jawaria, the truth behind Prophet Muhammad. And how he made them hostages. And I felt, I wouldn't like Prophet, uh, this, not to come near me, but she had to sacrifice, that's what I was told, you see. So don't blame it on me, first find out who Anita Rai is, who's having serial dreams. And that's how she wrote this. And another one, An Affair of the Heart, I started working on two books simultaneously, I just skipped some. Oh yeah, here, yeah. every author is at some point asked, where did you get your ideas for this book. Very, very important that I was going to miss and skip this paragraph. Well, I got mine the very moment I knew I will never recover from the sheer impact of one look at the face of Muhammad. <laughs> That's, he's come in my dream. Anyways, 19, before I went to London, after I graduated from St. Joseph's College, 1993 somewhere, or 1994, the Prophet of Islam, he looked at me and I could not help but respond to the immense grace with as much grace as I could muster up. He came to me on more than a few occasions and even spoke to me. And in every single of these visitations, and many others in which his household members too have visited me. My soul has experienced a deluge of light. These singularly powerful images of embodied peace and commitment are sources of my ideas. Sorry if I'm acting funny here. 
I started working on two books simultaneously. So this is where these, Kurukshetra, Calvary, and Karbala, dates with destiny. This other, her one last word, look out for my third book called Kurukshetra, Calvary, Calvary, and Karbala, dates with destiny. And my fourth book called Ghadir, she's got all this knowledge from dreams and all this. Visiting, uh, Prophet Muhammad visiting her in her dreams and the al al not the wives, but, you know, Shia side, how we see, how we see that, uh, so this, and I getting here like a mad person, So first, I, I don't uh, rely on dream. They told me not to rely on dream. No, even in, yeah, about my, about religious dreams. Uh, what, who, there was someone I, I met in a bookstore. He was um, a student, a very decent Pakistani man. Then we started to talk. I said, oh, if you are into science, medical, can you help me? So, very young man, a young brother type. Oh, well, because in Islam you can't have brothers, actually. So, I started to talk to him on the fo uh, on the internet. Sorry, not phone, internet. Uh, and messenger, MSN messenger. And he was telling me not to believe in my dreams. Uh, even, even, Janab, how can you say and he didn't believe that Kafi is a true book, and not even his Bukhari. So he was helping me, not even the Sunni side and not even the Shia side. And he was saying, well, the dream has come to you that Prophet Muhammad came at the uh, foot of your bed and said, I'm Prophet Muhammad and my daughter Fatima, and she appeared. And they left me with half, half knowledge, like we cannot make you believe in it. Oh no, that's wrong. Uh, it it's not like that. So I thought, oh, you know, in Shia Islam, it's not. There's no dawa, and you have to find out your own self. And this is not to make believe something. So please give us evidence. So he was saying, Janab, ye, this is not the way. Uh, your dreams hold no special importance, no importance at all when it comes to first religion, first you use reason and uh, look at the Quran ayats, what they are saying and compare them, right? So all this is, uh, you were saying all this, uh, the Kafi also, the Shia book and uh, the Sunni books, Hadiths, but that we respect, I asked him like, uh, you respect, uh, he said that, yeah, the Pakistanis, if they honor uh, Prophet Muhammad, I don't know why this thing came out, like how much you honor and what you think of him, because in Surah Abbas, I just said that he frowned, so what do you think of that? Because the Sunni ways that the Prophet frowned and the Shia ways, the, uh, one of the Prophet's companion frowned at a blind man. Uh, so like that, anyways, he was telling me he was a very unbiased person, I felt at that time. And a very wise, sensible, well, not wise, but sensible to tell me. He was like, you can't believe in al kafi it's all junk. You can see it. What he couldn't explain to me in that MSN messenger, maybe, he failed. Now I see it. <coughs> Taking the Quran ayats and these what do you call it? So I cannot uh, go on someone who doesn't even show herself and has claimed to meet Prophet Muhammad and the progeny and been given details about what happened to them in Karbala and all this. In dreams, serial dreams. So Bani Mustalik. Uh, so I cannot take Anita Rai's thing anymore, I've left it, the book, 
but I might uh, someday refer to it like, you know, the essential. She says here, when I have the strength, right now, today, it's been enough for me a few hours uh, being in that hostage mode, frame of mind. And uh, uh, this uh, Prophet Muhammad, Apostle of Allah, no one can raise a voice against him. We are told it's written in the Quran ayat, but that was more we concentrate on that Umar raised his voice against him. But now, I, as far as I'm concerned, it came to me once I really hold, once I'm out of the shock. Because, see, I was like, not raped, but I felt violated and molested on my chest. And it was difficult to sleep also, because things were happening on my chest. And I was calling out to my principal. That's how I slept. But that mouth and everything here was happening. Yes, Apostle of Allah. So if the Qur'an says that no one can speak above his voice, no one can raise his voice above the voice of him, this Prophet, and if he turns out, for me he has a false Prophet, then how do you say it in a most diplomatic manner? And also a most reasonable manner, so that it doesn't hurt the Shia's feelings. But we are finished. Is that? You see, she fell into the hands of. You see, 1000, so I can now see back to Khandakar that they left. They, this man is unstoppable. Abhi aapki betiya. Isne le liye, rape kar rahe. What? She's taken your girls, your daughters, rape them. Abhi kya bach hai? Bachon ko. Ja ke feed karo. Phir aajau hapas mere paas. Come back to me and lie down. Right? They're finished. Their morale is gone. They're, they're in despair. Complete despair. Okay, uh, thank you. I will continue with this uh, later.